So what I have here is uh, the first conic section, really. It's called a parabola. And so the parts of the parabola are this point and this line. They have the names focus and directrix. Now the directrix is called the directrix because I think it directs the parabola. As I switch the directrix around, it's going to be angling the parabola um, directly a away from the directrix. And then if I start moving the focus, the focus is going to kind of determine how wide or how skinny the parabola is. As the focus gets closer to the directrix, the skinnier the parabola is going to be. So why are parabolas important? Well, one of the things, and, and the original way that they found the parabola, is that if you take any point along that curve, and then you measure from this point to this point, and then you measure from this point to the line, the directrix, it's always going to be the same. So no matter where I slide this point, we're always going to have those two line segments be the same. Um, what this also tells us, if you think about it, if you put this, this point right at the bottom of the parabola, it's going to be the e an equal length from at the focus to the vertex and from the vertex to the directrix. And so this point right here, when it's exactly equal, that is called the vertex. Okay, so we actually have to then derive an equation for this. So in any situation, you can either graph from an equation or find the equation for the graph. Okay, so first, I'm going to show you where this equation comes from. So let's pretend we're on the xy plane, and we're just going to focus on parabolas that are centered at the origin, at 0, 0. This is my vertex. So I have a parabola opening up here. Now, the part of the focus would be directly above the vertex. And the focus is always, that we call it P. It's just always been a variable P when I've learned it. And P is the distance from the focus to the vertex. And so if the vertex is 0, 0, this focus point is 0, P. Now what this means is the directrix is exactly the same length on the other side of the vertex. So you're going to have a p dissonance negatively, and you're going to have a directrix about here, which is y equals negative, not x, negative p. Okay, now here's the trick, and here's the key to figuring out the equation. If I take any point along this line, x, y, and I measure from the focus to the point, and then from the point directly to the directrix, they should always be equal. And so in this picture, it doesn't look exactly equal, but um, that's just because it's not drawn to scale. So the way that we find the equation is to use the distance formula for those two distances here, and then set them equal. So if you remember, the distance formula is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And I'm going to do that twice. So first from the focus to this point, the distance is going to be x minus 0 squared plus y minus p squared. Okay. And now on the other side, we're going to be doing the distance from the point down to the directrix, which is going to be x minus x squared plus y minus a minus p, which is y plus p squared. Now to simplify this, we're going to square both sides. So we have right here an x squared plus, and then here we just have 0, so we have a y plus p squared left over. And now I am going to expand by foiling. This is going to be y squared minus 2py plus p squared. And on the other side, we'll have y squared plus 2py plus p squared. All right, and you'll notice we have some things on both sides that can cancel out. So we just have x squared minus 2py equals 2py. And we're almost done. I'm going to add this over to the other side. My final answer, my final equation, is going to be this right here. Now this is for a vertical 
parabola. And whenever you see the parabola opening up or opening down, you're going to have x squared equals 4py. Now one thing here, this p is going to determine your focus. So as p gets larger, that means the f it's going to be further away from the center. It's also going to be a skinny parabola. If p is negative, then it's going to actually flip over. The focus will be below. So if you ever have a horizontal one, say that you have a parabola on its side opening to the right, then you're going to have this equation. y squared equals 4py. That is going to be your horizontal. Okay, so what's going to happen is you're going to get an equation kind of like, for example, we'll come to the side here, if you get x squared equals 16y, now you're going to think, okay, this is a vertical parabola, and this number in front of y is actually 4p. So if you think 4p equals 16, your p is going to be 4. So already I found that the vertex is going to be 4 above, sorry, the focus is going to be 4 above the vertex, and the directrix will be 4 below. And so that's how you kind of piece it together. So one of the things they'll have you do is, using this information, they're going to have you find the equation for a parabola. So right here I have a vertex of 0, 0 and a focus of 0, 2. So when I do these, I like to draw a picture. It's going to be opening upwards, I know, because the focus is going to be at 0, 2. Also, by the way, this means the directrix is down at y equals negative 2, it has to be 2 in the opposite direction. So this is the p value that we're going to be working with, and in this case p is 2. So I'm going to think x squared equals 4py. I'm going to write x squared equals 4 times 2, which will be 8y. Now generally you can leave it like this if it's a conic section. But some people do like rewriting it as y equals 1 eighth x squared uh, because we're kind of used to that function form, and this way you can graph it. And by the way, if you ever need to double check your work here, I really recommend a program called GeoGebra uh, because you can do some things with conics in there, but also decimals works really well. Another style problem that you're going to run into is they give you some information and you have to figure out where everything's located. Um, in this problem also, we're going to start talking about translations. Everything we've done so far has been a parabola based at 0, 0, where the vertex is right in the center at 0, 0. But this will be shifted. So a parabola has a directrix x equals 5, and already I'm thinking I should be drawing a picture. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's my directrix. So this tells me my parabola is going to be either open up to the left or the, to the right. It's going to be horizontal. And the focus is at 3, 2. So I go over 1, 2, 3, and I go up 2. There's my focus. Okay, now this means that your vertex has to be exactly halfway between the focus and the directrix, which means our vertex is going to be at 4, 2. And it's going to be opening up kind of this way. All right, so first things first, we're going to find our p. We're going to find the equation. And then we have to adjust the equation because this vertex is not centered at 0, 0. So first of all, p here is going to be 1. But I'm not just talking about a 1 to the right. I'm talking about 1 to the left to get to the focus. So this is actually going to be a negative 1. Generally on its side, if it's positive, it's going to be going to the right. If it's a negative p, it's going to be going to the left. So that tells us we're going to have y squared equals 4px. So first, that's the horizontal version. And then we're going to put in the p value, so it's going to be negative 4x. Now this is if your vertex is at 0, 0. So now, how do we get it to move to the appropriate spot? Well, when we were doing function transformations, if you want to slide a function left or right or up or down, what you do is you add or subtract that number. Just remember that when you did it inside of a function, it was always the opposite. 
So I'm leaving everything the same except I'm leaving room so that I can do x and y plus or minus something inside. Now I need, it used to be at 0, 0, so I need it to be shifted over 4 and then up 2. And so in the x direction, if I want to go right 4, I have to do x minus 4 because it's the opposite inside. And then on the y, if I want to go up 2, I might have to do y minus 2. So my answer is going to be this whole equation here. And generally we just leave it there. We don't try to expand it out. But this tells us the negative 2 and neg negative 4, that tells us where the vertex is. And the negative 4 is our 4p. That will be able to give us our, our focus and our directrix. So why are we using parabolas? Just a quick note here. Parabolas are really interesting because if you, the reason this is called the focus is because any kind of ray or light or sound that comes into a parabolic surface will always reflect up to the focus. That's why it's called a focus. So there's a couple applications for this. Uh, if you see your cable TV, not cable TV, satellite TV up on your roof, it's going to have a parabolic surface. It's going to take signals and it's going to take a wide area of signals, but they're all going to focus in on the receiver inside. Also, this is how long distance microphones work. It takes sound, which might be weak, but after all the sound that's been spread out over a distance, after it's been focused back in on a focus, it's strong again. And also, this is how you make a hot dog cooker. You can, uh, you can cut out of cardboard a parabolic surface. You can lay tinfoil on it. And as long as your hot dog is right at the focus, all the sunlight coming into your parabolic surface will roast a nice hot dog for you.